For this particular lesson, we're going to discuss the symmetry of graphs of functions that you could see. Now, there's two main types of functions, or excuse me, two types of symmetry that we're going to deal with uh, here mostly, and that's point symmetry, which is when a graph is reflected across an entire point, and then we're going to be dealing with line symmetry later on in the lesson when a graph is reflected across a particular line. Now, different types of graphs have different types of symmetry or they have no symmetry at all. Um, so we just want to use this as a means of identification um, and become comfortable with this. Now we've kind of started discussion of reflecting and flipping graphs over various points and, and lines up at this point. But now we need to dig in a little deep. We'll start off our discussion with point symmetry and you can see that we have some images that are just representative of values on a plane that are reflected around a given point. Um, and so if they're reflected across a point, they have their image point on the other side. And you can see um, a geometric shape, a line, and you can also see the graph of a function uh, in the examples given. Now, the most common point of symmetry is the origin. And so we're going to discuss how we come up with knowing whether the origin is uh, a point of symmetry or not. So if we look at this um, first example, it says to look at the pattern of the table of functions, of the table of value, function values for f of x equals x uh, equals 3. Now, if you notice, when filling in these functions, what you're going to basically see is this. You're going to see f of x is our standard parent function. And I apologize if this thing moves around a little bit. I had some trouble with it earlier. But you can see our standard cubic function looks something like this. So that's f of x. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go just to the calculator and then actually graph f of negative x and so that means that I'm going to use parentheses and I'm going to use the little negative x close parentheses raise to the third and I'm going to hit enter and you can see that that kind of flips our graph around. Now according to our um, table of values here it looks as if the negative of that uh, should be the same thing. So I'm going to try that again. So here, what I'm going to do this time, instead I'm going to do negative, and in the parentheses I'm going to put x raised to the third power. And I want to see if that gives me the same thing, and it absolutely does. Kind of hard to see. Um, I'm going to drag that out a little bit. But you can see that it overlays uh, each other on the graph, and so that would basically mean here that on this other side, I have two functions. I have f and negative x, and I have f, or excuse me, negative f of x, and showing that those two equal. Now, what that means is if those two uh, functions equal, we are dealing with a graph uh, that has point symmetry and more specifically point symmetry with respect to the origin. So this is a good test. Now we had to graph it on a um, coordinate plane here with table of values but obviously the quick way would be just to simply move to um, your graphing calculator. So if we look at the next one uh, on the following page it asks us to check the following on our calculator as well. And so um, I'm just going to graph g of x first on the calculator. And I'm just going to clear this out. And so we have 1 over x. And so I just do 1 divided by x. And I hit enter. And you can see that we have um, these two graphs that never touch each other. Okay, and you can see the reflection that's across the origin here. Now, this is much easier to tell visually than mathematically. 
So if I'm graphing that, I'm simply saying that this is coming through roughly at about 1 and negative 1 in it. We'll get to this graphing technique later. And again, I apologize if the graph's moving around on you. Now, we can check this for symmetry simply by graphing the negatives uh, of this, the g of negative x. So I'm going to try that. So g of negative x would be 1 divided by, and in parentheses, a negative x. And so that would give me that graph. Now, other than just looking at it, I know that this will be point symmetry with respect to the origin if the negative function is the same. So this time I'm going to put uh, negative 1 divided by x and hit enter and of course we have the same graph and it just overlays the top of that and so that tells us very clearly that this graph has point symmetry with respect to the origin. So that's just a quick easy way for you to um, determine mathematically uh, if a function is uh, symmetric with respect to the origin and of course you can see through the graphical or the visual way to tell that as well.